Uh, hey everybody, it's TJ again with the A Good Data Roll Die blogs, coming back at you with some more 12 Days of Trekmas. I think it's day 8. I think so. Sorry, I'm behind. Um, I apologize to the three people who watch this. Hi mom. Uh, but uh, I'm trying to get back on track here with another look at a attack wing ship. And again, my purpose of these little reviews is to look at uh, some, some ships I've recently purchased. Um, but those that uh, are ship packs that are prior to the faction packs that started coming out in 2017 and determining do they still have any place in the current game environment a lot has changed there's been a lot of power creep in attack wing since then um, and as we've seen some of the ships still have a place uh, maybe some of them not so much so today we're looking at the iss defiant the mirror defiant um, standard defiant class ship it's nice looking i like it i like the design it, it's under Disputably Federation while being a little bit uh, aggressive in its in its uh, in its uh, aesthetics, ninety degree forward firing arc, ninety degree rear. So there we go. It's it's a it's it's a defiant class. Um, the name defiant itself. Oh, and I should say I picked this up at Amazon for like seventeen bucks. So again, right around MSRP. Right, so that's the whole point here. I'm not looking at the super expensive, uh, you know, uh, ships like the Hood or or what have you, um, you know, this is stuff that you can still find easily uh, in, in various places. So uh, ISS Defiant, it's a Defiant class. And I think that's great because that there's a lot of opportunity here to cross faction if you're willing to do that. So you have um, a blade of armor and you have phaser cannons that came out into Boldly Go. And you also have uh, more recently to rule so to rule, if you put a cloaking device on a ship and the ship cloaks, if it's a Defiant class, you get a free battle station token. So that's pretty nice as well. So because it's a Defiant class, even though it's a mirror Defiant, it still can use those cards, which is pretty awesome. Um, stat line, 4233. Uh, that is, uh, that's pretty good. I, in fact, I like that better than the standard Prime Defiant, which is just th uh, three attacks. So it's 3234. So you're giving up a, a shield here for more attack dice. I mean, this is the Defiant. This is the ship that we were told was des was initially designed to uh, fight the Borg. And then later it fights the Dominion, and it does a pretty damn good job. So I always thought it was a little unfair that in the game, the Defiant class has less attack dice than a, a Burrell. Um, it just seemed weird to me. So I, I like this. Uh, this is the way the Defiant should be, in my mind. Uh, two weapons, two crew. I, I wish there was a tech slot here. Because you really do need this, I think. You know, again, you want to play a blade of armor on here, honestly, or maybe you want to cloak. Um, the other Defiant class ships, the Prime Universe ones, have a tech slot, so it kind of hurts this one to not have it. But there are some ways to make up for it in this pack. Uh, Twenty-four points. Um, that's actually not too bad. The, the recosting would bring it down to you know the, the Prime Defiance are twenty points, but again, their stat line is a little bit different. In Fremont Reformation, they have the ISS defined at 21 points. Even at 24, it's not it's not terrible. I might consider it even at the original cost, honestly. It might be one of the only ships I consider it still at the original cost, just because I, I like it. Uh, special ability, when you take damage, you can uh, accept a auxiliary power token to reduce that damage by one. So that's great. If you're concerned about losing that shield, now you've just made up for it a little bit. So that's kind of nice. So I like this. Uh, I like this ship a lot. Um, I think it works well with you know the, a defiant theme uh, build if you want to go that route. The uh, all these cards are all mixed up here because I wasn't thinking ahead. The generic defiant um, not so good. No, number one, the web the cost is the same, which um, you know that that doesn't make sense to me. I'm not sure if that's a misprint or or what, uh, but definitely should not have a 24 point cost for what it is because you're you're losing a crew slot, which is a bummer. You're losing uh, the special ability, you're losing a shield, and you're paying the same amount. That doesn't make any sense. The generic, I'm not sure with the generic Defiant being recosted, if that also means that this ship uh, has 16 points as well since it's a mirror version and the stat line's a little different. But even if it was 16 points, I mean, just get a get a Burrell if you want. 
if you want four attack dice, you know, that, that, that it's cheaper. And honestly with cloak and stuff, you have probably better survivability in, in, in all, in all cases. So um, I just don't see a reason to use the generic defiant. If you want a generic defiant, that is where I'd use the prime universe version. Uh, the maneuver dial here, it, uh, it's a little different than the prime defiant. It loses the white turn. So you get a red three turn. Um, and, uh, well, that's, that's really the only difference, but it'd be nice if, uh, we would see some green two banks to kind of play in with the defiance ability. You know, it gets that aux token and you have some more versatility to get rid of it. It also kind of match the, um, the differences that we see, say between the Burrells and the bird of prey, where the bird of prey has a, a, some more red maneuvers, but it also has more green to offset it here. We don't get that. So that's kind of, that's kind of too bad, but, um, it is what it is. So. So that's the ship. Uh, we have your generic captain. Eh. Okay. Then we have Smiley, Miles O'Brien. Again, another card I really like here. Um, five skill, three points, has elite talent slot. So not a lot of, not all five skill captains have elite talent slot. It's kind of a transitional period. You know, once you get to six skill, pretty much everyone has elite talent. For I think there's probably a few out there. There's probably some exceptions to prove the rule, but you know, five and below, it's kind of iffy whether you get that elite talent. So it's nice to see it here. Uh, you get that tech slot that you need on the defiant, so that's great. And uh, you get an action to repair damage, uh, hold or shields, and it's uh, not a conditional action. So I've seen some some uh, cards uh, elsewhere in other packs where you had to discard them or disable them to repair damage. Uh, here you don't have any of that, so um, you just repair damage. That's really nice. Um, so I think as a mirror captain, he's he's pretty solid, and I think he's a good one for for the ISS Defiant. Uh, Benjamin Cisco, two points, four skill, elite talent again. So again, it's uh, kind of unusual to see a four skill captain with an elite talent. So it's nice to have it here for that versatility. Uh, the ability you can discard your upgrades, up to two of them, during the combat phase to gain plus one attack die for each one discarded. Um, that's that's an okay ability. Uh, the Klingons have a, have a few cards that use that. Uh, Duras and uh, Krug have similar abilities where you can discard um, upgrades or discard crew members to gain attack dice. There's you know, some versatility there if you're going to load up a cheap ship with cheap upgrades or you have cards like Sakona or we're going to see in a minute here Jennifer Sisko where they um, they don't do anything once the game starts. You know, they're basically there to help set up your, your ship, and then they just kind of sit there. So you could use them to discard. But, um, you know, I wouldn't put a ton of, of uh, points into a, a, a ship or a captain that does that. There are two elite talents, and I'm going to show them here side by side because they both offer a extra attack. It just depends upon how you want to go about doing that. So with Strafing Run, it's an action. You have to perform a maneuver of three or more. And then you have to target a ship outside of your primary firing arc and throw four attack dice at it. Um, with Rebellion, uh, you have to be defending against a ship with a higher hull value. You discard Rebellion. That ship rolls two less attack dice. And then you can, if you are in, uh, if you have, if that ship is in your primary firing arc, you can then make a free attack with your primary weapon. So both five costs. So different ways of going about it. Um, Strafe and run, you know, it's an action. You know, I've mentioned before, I, I, I am a hard sell for actions that unless they somehow boost quality on the attack or something like that um so that's you know you get a free attack here but where's the quality coming from that's always my question right um but you can do it during the activation phase maybe catch your opponent off guard they're not ready for it um anytime a free any free attack's a good attack you know at the end of the day a uh, rebellion i think rebellion's a better one for the defiant um because you know, there's, there's gonna be a lot of ships that have a higher hull value you're going to minimize the damage, and then you, know, you can come back at them with a pretty good attack. Um, Cross-factionally, I could see putting this on, say, the Sao Paulo with Worf, right? Because, uh, you know, those two abilities are going to come back, and you're going to guarantee damage. Um, and then you can come back during the attack phase and do some more damage with phaser cannons or something like that. So you, you could conceivably do three attacks uh, with a Defiant-class ship and do a fair amount of damage. And probably make your opponent think twice about, uh, about attacking you while that rebellion card is is on the table. Uh, we have five crew, and their abilities all kind of center around messing with your opponent's stuff. Okay. So first we have Jennifer Cisco, three points. She adds another tech slot, so this is another option if if you don't want to use uh, Smiley as your captain. 
And then at the start of the game, during the setup phase, you can target one ship and uh, anywhere in the play area and disable it to two upgrades of your choice. So that's, that's really nice um, to have two upgrades because if, if you disable just one at the beginning of the game, and there are some cards that do that, um, I feel it's, it's annoying to your opponent, but it's not a game changer because usually the first round you're not attacking. You're just kind of setting up. So your opponent can kind of slow walk that ship, get rid of that disabled token on the first round, and be ready to go by the second round. Um, if you disable two, that, then that becomes kind of a conundrum because there's a very good chance that, um, you know, if you're gonna be, if, especially if you're being aggressive, you can get within range of that ship by round two to attack it. And if it doesn't have the upgrades ready to go, it's going to be caught off guard. So I think that's really nice. And it, it's nice, too, that it's any upgrade. It's not it's not a specific type. You can just choose whatever. Because, um, you know, uh, as we'll see in a minute here, and let's go right into it, uh, we have ROM. It's kind of a similar ability, just two points. You have, a, you have to use it as an action. Uh, that's nice because you don't have to pop it off at the beginning of the game. So you could you could do it at, at you know uh, at a time that's more opportune to disable that ship. Um, but you can disable up to two tech upgrades and just tech upgrades. So uh, that's, I think, more limiting. I mean, there's not a lot of ships that are going to run two tech upgrades. Uh, the Fed uh, has has a number of them. The Herogen, I suppose, but you know, like Klingons, Romulans. Uh, I guess maybe the Borg might be running multiple tech, but I don't feel like I see a ton of ships that run two tech upgrades. So you're probably expecting to disable one, which can still be useful, but it, uh, you know, you, you don't not get in the maximum uh, value out of the card at that point. So, um, which is probably why it's two points, two points uh, on a mirror ship. I might consider it, uh, although the action is again, is a drawback. I wouldn't cross faction for, for three points. It, that would be too much for me to disable what is effectively going to be one tech. So, Here's another tech disruptor, uh, Ezri Tegan, four points, another action. But this action's a lot better in my mind. Uh, you discard Ezri, and then you can target a ship at range one to three and steal steal one tech upgrade, put it on your ship, uh, and you put a disable token on it. So you're, you're 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 taking away your opponent's stuff, and not only are they can't they they can't use it, but now you're you can use it instead. That's just really nice. Um, and there's some pretty good tech out there now, uh, you know, Klingon cloaking device, Romulan cloaking device. Um, you know, the Federation has all these fancy different types of shielding. Um, so they're, they're, you're probably going to see tech to some extent on, on an opponent's fleet. And sometimes that, that tech is going to be kind of integral to that build. And if you can get rid of it and take it for yourself, even if you can't use it, just taking away that toy is, is going to be worthwhile. Julian Bashir, two points, another action. Uh, you discard Julian, target the ship at range one to three, and if that ship attacks this round, it must attack your ship. And if it does attack your ship, uh, it rolls negative two attack dice. So right off the bat, I'm thinking, put him with Rebellion. Um, you, you can only maximize the attack reduction by three points, because uh, three three dice because of the rule of three. But still, um, you know, you're kind of forcing your opponent into uh, a, a no-win scenario, as it were. Um, in that in that case, I also like this card because it says if that ship attacks, it must attack you. So um, it either attacks your ship or it doesn't attack at all. So you're either denying an attack, or you're forcing that opponent to uh, to attack you in, in, in on your terms. Um, so uh, you know that that's that's doubly uh, doubly useful. You know, compare that to the uh, Ningtao core where um, it targets all the ships within range and. Um, if they're able to attack his ship, they can. But if they can't, they can still attack somewhere else. So I think this this ability it's a little more narrow in scope. It's only one ship, but it also um, is is kind of a you know or nothing, uh, everything or nothing, all or nothing, however you want to say that phrase, um, uh, to work with that. So I, I like that. Last uh, card here, Jadzia Dax, two points, um, not an action. So that's good. Uh, when your ship is about to suffer hull damage, you can discard Jadzia to reduce it by one. I mean, any sort of damage reduction is good. Um, although by the time you're getting to to the hull, eh, um, you know, then then you're kind of in trouble already. I can see if you're, you're going to put like a cloaking device on on the Defiant or something like that, or you have a cloaked ship that might be useful there. Um, but I probably wouldn't pay a cross faction penalty for it. Um, I feel like there's uh, across other factions, there, there's more. Versatile ways to repair or prevent damage in most cases. All right. Got two weapons. Quantum torpedoes. There's just nothing here for me. Um, it's six points. Uh, it's five damage. You have to disable the card. It's been a target lock. If you hit the ship, you get one additional damage, which is nice. But 
I mean, uh, the Fed, the Fed photon torpedoes have basically made almost every, every other torpedo card obsolete, with maybe the exception of the Ferengi or the Klingon two-point torpedoes. Um, even the new quantum torpedoes that come in ships of the line, I mean, they're kind of nice, but um, I mean, for three points, even cross-faction three points to guarantee damage with a battle station token, I just don't see the reason to use quantum torpedoes um, in my mind. I'm sure there's some situation. I'm sure that there's going to be someone who's going to come up with some really killer combo with the new quantum torpedoes that I'm going to hate. But in, in the meantime, I think uh, photon torpedoes is a more solid choice. Uh, the other weapon in here I do like, uh, aft phaser emitter, so it's just three damage. It's only one point. It does disable to attack. You can only fire it from your rear firing arc, but it is range one to three. It eliminates the range bonus at distance, um, and it's just a way to cover your, your backside for one point, and you can almost always find a, a point somewhere in a fleet if you want to add this. Uh, from a mirror perspective, you know, your Defiant, your ISS Avenger, your Regent's flagship, those are still all pretty easy to find if you want to pick those up. Those are going to be very commonly used in, in mirror fleets, and they all have a rear firing arc, so they can all benefit from this. Even going cross-faction for two points to potentially cause three damage, you know, and I see this card being used maybe once, probably once, maybe twice during the game because it's a disable, um, but just, just to make your opponent think uh, think twice before coming up from behind, it's not it's not a bad option. For for one point, it's, 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 it's a good option for one point, I and mean, it's only one point. Finally, we have multi-targeting phaser banks. Uh, five points, so kind of pricey, but it basically gives you two the ability to target lock up to two ships at a time. And then when you initially perform a target lock action, you can disable this card to perform a second target lock at the same time. So it doubles up your target lock action. Um, that's this is I think the only well this is yeah the only card in the game that would allow you to to do a double target lock. I, I can't think of another one that does. Maybe there's one out there. I mean, there's a lot of cards, but uh, off the top of my head, this is the only one I can think of. So um, it's kind of pricey, but I, I can see some value there. I mean, if you're going to do phaser cannons on a Defiant, um, you know, you're going to target two different ships. Well, now you have quality on both of those attacks. Um, if you have, you know, it, we have some low skill captains in this in this pack. So if you're going to use them, um, and you want to target lock a ship to fire photon torpedoes or what have you, um, the concern is always, you know, you're going to be moving early, you're going to target lock early, and that ship could then move out of range. Well, now you can target lock two ships, so it increases your chances of being able to attack somebody, right? So I think there's some value there. Um, it's kind of pricey for what it is. I like the fact that there's actually some Rada on here that says that even when the ship, it, when this upgrade is disabled, that you can still target lock two ships at a time, so it's still effective even then. Plus, it allows you to do a double target lock uh, at least once. So there's some value there. There's there's probably there's probably something to to do with this card. Um, uh, I'm just not thinking of kind of kind of have like a half thought right now about how to use it, um, and uh, something I would definitely definitely consider though. Um, uh, uh, you know, think, thinking of, on it at least. Okay. So that is the Defiant. Overall, I really like this pack. I'm not a huge fan of Mirror Universe in general, but I think there's a lot of fairly inexpensive cards, or at least cards that aren't overpriced that still have a place in the game now, especially you know, a lot of the crew here, disruptive uh, abilities. You know, Rebellion and Strafing Run, you know, ha extra attacks is a big part of, of the environment now, so if you can add those, that's great. Um, even the Captains, I, I, I like Smiley a lot, um, just to put him on this ship, honestly. Uh, maybe I'm biased, I, I like the character in, in the the smiley character in the, in the, in the show as well. So, um, the only one that was really a, kind of a bummer is the, the, the generic, even if it's recosted, this isn't really worth it to me, but, um, the ISS to find, I think is great. There's, there's a lot of cross factional opportunities here. Um, and if you're concerned about cross faction penalties, there's a ways around that. There's Soval from the ISS Avenger pack that, that eliminates cross faction penalties. You can put Sakona on here to, you know, really weaponize the ship and save on some some points here too. So there's some ways around it. Yeah, you also have to consider the auxiliary power token issue if you're going to use the ability. Um, but you know, it's it's going to help you know save your butt probably keep it keep it going for another round or two if you can reduce some of that damage. And that four points is a big thing too because what does everyone do on the Defiant class and and the 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 Prime Defiance, the Sao Paulo, the they're gonna the first thing they're gonna do is they're gonna put a Type Eight Phaser or an upgraded Phaser or the new Type Ten Phasers on there to boost that attack value. 
Okay, so this ship just has a built-in. That's what everyone wants out of the Defiant. They want four. They want four attack dice on the primary weapon. This is the only Defiant that's going to get get you that. Um, so, and I, and I like the picture too. I think this is a cool picture. Uh, so, for what it's worth. So yeah, I, I like this pack. I would definitely uh, definitely pick it up again. Um, and uh, yeah, well, hope hope you you agree with me there. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. I uh, appreciate your uh, you sitting here with me. Uh, have a Merry Trekmas, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.